Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to project two of 25 JavaScript beginner projects. In this application, we're gonna be creating a simple application where you could just click the button and it's gonna change the color of the background. And it's also gonna display the hexadecimal color code of that background color. And we're also gonna show you how to do this cool animation that changes the color of the text. I created a website dedicated to the 25 JavaScript beginner projects that we're working on in this series. So if you guys want to check that out, it's at jsprospect.com. I talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to learn if you want to be a web developer. And I also included the projects here so you can scroll through. And if you want to watch a video, all you have to do is just click on it and you'll be able to watch the video here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a folder. We're gonna call this one hex colors. Now let's open up our Visual Studio. And we're gonna open up that folder. All right, now let's create our three files. We have index.html. style.css and script.js we're going to begin with our index.html file let's click shift one enter now let's link the css and javascript file to the html file all right there's the css file And there's the JavaScript file. We're going to use Bootstrap for this project. So we're going to go grab the Bootstrap CDN. So let's search for Bootstrap CDN. Let's click on this first link. Quick start. And we're going to copy this URL here. We're going to paste it up here. So let's type in link and control V. So we have access to Bootstrap now. All right, now I'm going to resize the window so you can see any changes that we make in our document in our local server. So let's right click and open with live server. All right, now we're gonna begin here inside the body. Let's create a container course we know that in order to create a container we're going to use a div element and we're going to create a class call it container within this container we're going to create another container so let's create another set of div tags and let's give this a class as well this one we're going to call it hex colors and within this hex colors container we're going to write some text so let's use a h1 element for that. And this is going to say, click the button below to display the hex code of a random color. And right below that, we're going to write some more text. This time we're going to use the h2 element. So the text is going to be slightly smaller than that of the h1 element this one is going to say the hex code of the color is and white is actually five zeros so that's what we're going to display initially but of course we're going to change this number here with javascript so we're going to create a span and we're actually going to cut this and we're going to paste it in the center here. So this is just temporary. Of course, when we change the color, this is going to change as well. So let's give this an ID so we can access it through JavaScript later. All right, we're going to call that hex code. And now we're going to include a button, but we're going to use bootstrap for that. 
So let's search for bootstrap buttons. Let's click on this link here and go ahead and select the button that you want to use. I'm going to use the primary one. So I'm going to copy the link for that. Oops. And I'm going to paste it in here. All right, there's the button. Now let's change the text. So we don't want it to say primary. We want it to say click me. And when we click this button, of course, the background is going to change. And so is this. So we have to include an on click here so we can call in a function. And let's call the function change color. And if I'm going a little bit too fast, it's because I already covered a lot of this stuff in project number one. So if you feel like I'm going a little bit too quick, go watch video number one. And I explain everything step by step. All right, let's remove any spaces here. So our HTML is nice and neat. And that's going to be it for our HTML. All right, let's start off by changing the font of the text here, but I don't want to use any of the built-in fonts. So I'm going to search for the Google font API because it has a tons of fonts to use. Go ahead and click on this link here, Google fonts and select the font that you want to use. There's a bunch of them in here. If you know the name of the font that you want to use, you can type it up here. So I'm going to use this one, Comforta. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And as you can see, they have different versions of that font. I'm going to go with medium 500. So I'm going to click select this style, select import, and I'm going to copy the contents that are within the style element here. Let's go back to the project and we're going to paste that up here. All right. So we have access to that font now. Now we just have to change the font family of the body to be able to see the font. So now we're going to copy this. We can exit out of here and let's paste that in here. All right. So we now have that font. All right. Let's change the features of our container. We're going to start by giving it a border. And the only reason that I'm creating this border is so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to delete that border before we're done with the project. First thing we're going to do is change the width of the container. So initially it's 100%. Now it's 95%. It doesn't have a height. Well, it does have a height of only the contents that are within the container, but I want to make it as big as the screen. So I'm going to use 100 VH. All right. All right, now I'm going to turn that container into a Flexbox because I want to be able to use some of the features of Flexbox to move things around. The first thing I want to do is put the contents in the center. All right, so they're in the center now. But now I want to put them in the center of the screen. For that, we use Align Items, Center. All right, that's going to be it for the container. We're going to move on to the hex colors container. We're also going to create a border here to help you better grasp the idea of containers. So this hex colors is a container as well that is within the other container, which is this bigger one here. So this is, this is another container that, that is a smaller. All right, let's use text align center so we can place the contents that are within this container in the center, just like that. All right, and that's it for that one. Now let's change some of the settings for the H1, which contains this text here. Let's start by changing the font size to 2 rem. 2 rem is equivalent to 32 pixels 
each RAM is equivalent to 16 pixels. So if we have two, it's 32 pixels. We're also going to use text transform to change the text to uppercase. And we're also going to use animation because we want to create an animation that is going to change the color of this text here. Let's give it a name. Let's call it change color. We want it to last five seconds and we want it to be infinite and we want it to alternate. So in this case, it's going to alternate colors because that's what the animation is going to do. All right, and we're going to create that animation in a moment. Let's just finish up here. So for the H2 element, which contains this text here. All right, for this one, let's start off by creating a, a border as well. And we're going to change the font size to two rem. That way, both of these are the same size. All right, let's bring it down a little bit. We don't want it so close to this, this here. Um, and let's start by using padding top. Let's bring it down by 15%. And as you can see, using padding top brought it down, but it's the container. The container is still this big, but instead of doing this, I want to bring down the entire container along with the contents in it. I don't want to make it longer like I did here. So to do this, I'm going to change this to margin top. So as you can see, the entire thing came down. And that's why I created a border so you guys can see the difference between margin and padding. So this is a good example here. All right, let's create our animation. We start that by using this keyword keyframes. Let's type in the name of our animation, which we called color change. So right when this animation begins at 0%, what do we want to happen? I want the color to be indigo. So that's what it's going to start off as. And let's copy this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. So this is going to be at 20%. We're going to change the color at 40, 60, 80 and 100. Once again, we're going to start with indigo and we're going to move on to blue at 20%, then to green, yellow, orange and red. I actually called it color change, but the animation didn't call it change color here. So let's go ahead and change this to color change. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever we want to call it. And as you can see, the animation is taking effect already. So this animation is completely independent from JavaScript. It's all CSS. All right. And the final thing that I want to do here is make this completely responsive. And it's already responsive as it is, but I just want to take a little bit further. So I'm going to show you this website, responsive design testing, and we're going to copy the URL here and we're going to paste it in here. All right. So this is how our application is going to look at 320 pixels for 80, 768 for 768. It looks good. So does for 80. But 320 is about the size of a, a phone. And notice the text is a little bit too big. So we want to make it a little bit smaller when we're at 320 pixels. So let's add a media query here. And we're going to say at max, oops, at max width of 480 pixels, we want something to happen. And that is, we want the 
font size to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to change the font size of our H1 to 1.5. So we currently have 2 rem. We're going to change it to 1.5 once somebody looks at our application at 480 pixels or less. And let's also change it from the H2. Let's go back to this website and we're going to click enter and notice that the text is a lot smaller now. So from 480 and smaller, it's going to be 1.5 RAM. All right, let me go ahead and remove the border. Actually, I'll do that in a moment, but this is what we have so far. So as you can see, there's containers and yeah, that's going to be it for the CSS. All right, guys, let's get started with the JavaScript. Remember, when we click on this, we're going to call on a function called change color. So let's create that here. All right, there's different ways of going about this. I'm going to do this by creating an array called hex numbers. And in here, I'm going to include all of the different hex colors that there is so if you don't know about hex numbers they start at zero and they end at they go all the way to nine from zero to nine and then they start at a from a to f so we're going to include all of the different hexadecimal colors or numbers here All right, there's the array. Now we're gonna create a variable called hex code. And this is where the hex code that we're gonna generate is gonna go. And this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna create a, a for loop that is gonna generate this quote for us. So let's just do the random for loop stuff here. This is gonna loop a total of five times. So if i is less than six, that means it's only gonna loop five times i plus plus and right in here we're going to create a variable that's going to generate a random index that way we can grab one of these random numbers let me show you how we're going to do this so let's create a variable random index and we're going to use the built-in math floor function and i'll show you what this is doing in a moment let me just create this here All right, this math random multiplied by the length of our hex numbers array is going to return a decimal number between however big our hex numbers array is, which is, I believe it's 15 in here. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to do a console log and I'm going to do math random multiplied by hex numbers length let's right click and click inspect let's go to console and we're going to click this button notice that it gave us 15 point that decimal number and this one is eight so this is a random index number that we're generating but we we don't want it to be in decimal format because if we want to access any of these numbers, it doesn't work with decimals. It has to be a whole number. That's why we're using it together with math floor. So for instance, this one would be an 11. This would be a 12, so on and so forth. So that's what that little um, algorithm, I guess, does. So it's generating a random number from our array here. And we're going to do something with that. We're going to store it. We're going to concatenate it inside this hex code variable that we created here. And this is going to happen a total of five times. So it's going to generate 
a hexadecimal color code. So in here we have to do hex numbers and random index. So whatever random index that is generating here, we're going to put it into the hex numbers array and it's going to return that value and it's going to concatenate it in here and that's going to generate the hexadecimal number for us. So it's pretty clever the way that this works. Now we have the hexadecimal color code. All we have to do is change it whenever the user clicks here. We have to change this and we have to change the color of the background as well. So let's take care of that. So to change this here, remember we gave that an ID of hex code. So we need to access this and replace this. So we're going to do document get element by ID hex code and we're going to change the inner HTML to hex code. All right, now let's change the color of the background. So we're going to do document get element by tag name because we want to access the body and there's only one body so we're going to do the index of zero there and let's change the style of the background to um, the hexadecimal color code that we just generated but we have to start it off with this symbol here and we're going to concatenate that with hex code all right and that should be it. Now let's click this button. And every time that we click it, it's going to change the color of the background. That's going to be it for this project. I hope you guys learned a lot. And I'll see you guys in project number three.